it going? Hope you're having a good quarantine week. Which week is it? Three, four? Well, it depends on which country you're in, actually. So, today we did a poll that uh, about 350 people participated. Thank you. And we did the, um, I was going to, I wanted your input on what to do. So, I asked Ben Simon to uh, do this poll about do you guys want more puzzles or you want to focus on some strategies uh, specifically on Nimzo Indian with the doubled pawns and Nimzo Indian won by a little it was like a, last time I checked it was about like 54% to 46% so thank you for participating very lovely and so because it was very close I decided to include some puzzles in our two hour lesson today too so here's the first puzzle um let's think about it a little and it's white to move basically the question is um who do you think will win and how can you actually achieve that if you think white will win how can you achieve that so yeah i'm going to be monitoring the chat closely and so just feel free to type in and I'll be looking over it. have few suggestions all right so you guys are thinking about rook d7 a lot and rook d8 i have gotten one from akras nice okay so nixon thinks it's a draw all right i really like it you guys are already thinking differently about the position proud of you so yeah i'll give it another minute or two and then we can uh, go ahead and see the answer so um one thing that you can think about is well this pawn this is a very strong pawn correct so how can you actually support it that's something that you can work on Okay, so Memento Mori, you are correct. Rook d8 is the best move, and the idea is well, first of all, if you rook d8, you take it. If you take it, g7, and you can't stop this pawn because this rook is very misplaced. Can't really, this is gonna be a queen. And um, our other idea that we've talked about, so if the king was still on e7, king, G, king f7 was possible. But in this situation, it's impossible to do that. And you get the queen. And if king f6, for example, now we do the rook d7s that was suggested in, earlier in the chat. Yeah, and now uh, this is another great supporter and also rook f7 mates coming up. So yeah, the position is pretty um, pretty amazing for white. Alright, let's do the next one. So this one is black to move. Basically, how can you continue with white and use your... Uh, how can you continue with black and use white's mistake? Great, thank you.
So I have suggestions on Rook D1 so far, but Rook D1 is interesting, but um, you have something better. Similar idea. Who are the players? Um, this was a game played in the year 2000, and they were um, they weren't really high rated. I mean, they were high rated, but not Grandmaster high like, high rated. Um, the first one is mm, a two two three thirty, and the black one is two four oh seven. The ratings. I can write down the um, the players. Ooh. Yeah, so far we have two correct responses. So, yeah, Rook 2 is the winning move. The idea is after Rook 2, black is pretty tied up. Mm, sorry, white is pretty tied up, and white can't really uh, stop it. If you take, this is coming up. And bye-bye. If you don't take, what are you going to do? Are you going to move this rook somewhere? Then you lose the, this bishop and it's already very unpleasant. Alright, let's do one more before we get into the um, name is the Indian. Okay, so here all of white pieces are active. How can you use it? It's actually pretty, quite pretty. So, yeah, a lot of you guys are saying it. Good job. So, this is ideally you want to get this queen e6, right? So, but you can't because the queen on d7 is protecting the square. So, you go attack it, and after. Um, trying to block you get the check and king f8 now can someone just um, give me the finishing line And don't worry, these are just for fun to warm people up. You guys want a puzzle, so so if these puzzles are hard for anyone, the one thing that you can do is you can try to um, think about candidate moves, and um, if the move that is correct is one of your candidate moves. That's at least very, very nice, and I'll be very proud of you. So, the try to think about like a mating net, because that king is really, really kind of stuck, right? So, preferably give me a full line. All right, so give me it's it's not that hard. Give me a full line. Okay, so I'm getting knight h5, and then knight f6, and let's see if who's the first to give me checkmate in one. Yep. Alright, great. Any questions? Because I'm going to switch to Nimzo. Thank you, Josh, for um, your deep comment. All right, where is my Nimzo? Come on, don't go anywhere. Mm. All right, here. All right, 
guys. Okay, so I have a bunch of games prepared to show you. And so, um, first one I'm going to show you is a game that I played. And so I was black and this was in um, Abu Dhabi Tournament, Abu Dhabi Masters 2014. Wow, my rating was low. And actually, this um, this the the teenager that I played with, Anyan Pe, he was he's right now I think almost twenty five hundred. Last time I checked, and yeah, so I'm pretty proud of um, beating him. <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, maybe let's start taking a look at that. Okay, so um, first of all, uh, who here actually does play this name is Indian? With white or black because the pawn structures that I'm talking about are when you uh, with white you get these double pawn and I want to show you how to play against as black against this pawn structure and also what are the main ideas that white can try to pull off so my opponent in the game played a3, but there are many other lines that can lead to this, um, there are the f3 lines that can lead to, like, um, f3, a3 lines that can lead to this, um, double pawn, or with e3, so I'm gonna try and cover all of those in our time here. Oh, and while you guys are still giving me, um, votes on who plays this with white or black, uh... The link in the description below, we do have another detailed Nimzo Indian that we looked at previously, um, earlier. I think it was in, um, I want to say December, uh, but this year, we looked at this game this year in one of my chess and psychology classes, and it was a very nice strategical, um, positional on how to use the pawn structure with black. But um, it wasn't against the double pawn, it was more against, but we apply a lot of the ideas because um, it's the same uh, idea of where the pieces go, just this is even slightly better because you have uh, weaker pawns that I can look for. Alright, so... I like to play this c5 because my main idea is to get my pieces out like this. d6 is not necessary, so let me take it off. So my next 5-6 move is to play castle, b6, knight c6, knight a5, bishop a6. And um, so that's what I'm trying to achieve. So White has different setups. White can try to bring knight to f3 and then try and maybe defend with knight d2. But uh, knight coming to e2 is more aggressive because it's supporting the attack faster. And um, when I played this game, I, were, I was aware of these attacks with f4 and e4 because I saw some classic games, which I will show you after this game. And... I just wanted to show you this game first so you could get an idea of how dangerous it can get in a real game well like that I experienced and yeah so my opponents after castle e4 alright so my first question for you what do you think white wants and what do you think you should do as black right now what's your next move if you were white and if you were black Well, Nixon, it depends on the position. Uh, so right now, there are no real good uh, squares in the center to try and have your pieces there. So, um, and there is a clear target. So these are clear target that we are going to try and use. And that's why the pieces are going to the corners a little bit. So, bishop b7, maybe e5. Yeah, Perkins, you're correct. White wants bishop g5 to pin, 
And so you would play d6 by black. Um, or h6. I I could understand e6, but I'm uh, d6, but I am completely against h6 because fragrance. Uh, if you play h6, it's giving your opponents clear targets to start the pawn march like f5, f4, f5, e5, and that h6 pawn is always going to be super weak. We don't want to play d5 uh, with white. It would be nice if white played d5 because if white were to play um, d5 then you would have this knight a5 it's kind of whoops nope we don't want that it's kind of pushing for it i'm still not seeing the move that um okay so we have we have agreed that white wants to play this correct so how do we get rid of this pin let's see Mm, D6 possible, but not not strongest because the pin is still coming. Knight e8. Yes. Tim, I, t I think you're the first one to suggest knight e8. You're correct. Knight e8 is the best move. Why? Because you simply want to avoid getting under this fire. And you might have ideas with f5 yourself. You might want to come to d6 and attack over here. So these are going to be your next few moves. So playing d6 is interesting, but you will completely lose any chance of playing knight d6. And that's why we don't want d6 right away. So I guess the, um, this game would be the summary of most of the ideas that were applied that could be applied in this pawn structure. And then after seeing this game, we'll go and watch those ideas separately. Like if white managed to get this f4 or 5 attack, um, how to stop that if not with f5 and why is it important to play this knight e8 so yeah i guess that's our today plan all right um kind of like king's indian ideas but we are not really planning on attacking in the king side we're planning on stopping white's attack in the king side and attacking on the queen side so f4 right now what do you want to do as black i do know that it Indian is very strong last time i was looking he uh he had crossed around the 2400 he was an im and he had crossed 2400 uh i do believe he 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 either he's he's like almost a gm or he got his gm but it's been a it's been a year since i last checked so don't uh, but yeah, he, he's very strong, and I'm glad I beat him. So it's black to move, remember. this These could become super dangerous with push and push, and one of the ideas to get the knight away was to have the idea to, to stop f5s. So what do you guys think? Oh, great! He's a Grandmaster 2500 plus EA. Alright, Knight D6, interesting. G5, uh... G6 is still a little, uh... Have I played Gronfeld? Yeah, I played a few Gronfeld. I have, um... I had awesome positions, but I didn't actually get the results that I wanted, so I got a little bit discouraged. I'm still working my way uh, back to Gronfeld, but let's see. I'm still not seeing the move. Oh, thank you. Momento Mori. HF5. F5 is strong because it blocks everything. If you take it, now this is completely blocked and I can come after your pawn with... Um, whoops with free head and 
peace and knowing that my my position over here is pretty safe so white should play e5 now what do you play after e5 keep in mind that this knight is looking a little weird over here and that you ideally want to be able to start playing knight a5, but are you going to do it now or is it a little too early? Yeah, I played in Abu Dhabi tournaments 2013. I think I got my WIM norm in 2013, 13, yeah, and 14. And I think I got a WGM on 15 or almost something. I think it was an almost one. I had like a little performance less than uh, desired. And in 2016 was the last time I played. Um, I didn't play very well 2016, but I really liked playing there all the time. I like to go back, but it's just so far, because back then I used to live in Iran, and it was just like an hour plane away. Alright, so let's see what else we got here. Um... So we're getting a lot of d6 and g6 and d5's ideas. d6. d6 should be the right move. And so the, the main thing that you should calculate with d6 is what do you do after d5. Because d5 is like a scary one. If take you're good, you just take with the knight and everything's fine. And you're also attacking c4. So the main thing that you should calculate is what do you do after d5. too quiet so after d5 you want to play knight a5 um take over here maybe it's a little not scary everything good Well, the way I wanted to go about it was to take over here, exchange, and take this. Because this would be such a nice pin. And this is not possible. So that's what I wanted to do. But knight a5 is also quite interesting. Because if you take over here, taking is kind of mandatory. Because if not, then well, thank you for the pawn. Pawns. <laughs> and then after take, if you take over here... Um, this is an extremely strong bishop. I could just even play bishop here and keep my bishop, or even bishop e4. And now this bishop is a super monster. And this is also coming up. So you kind of do have to take it back with the queen. And after take over on e5. Um, pretty cool, huh? So, what my opponents did in the game was he played bishop e3. Now, do you think it's time to start with the knight a5s, or do you still want to prepare more for it?
Yep, 9 to 5 is this. And so, I think one of the main questions to think about is, what do you want to do if queen a4? Because queen a4 is literally the only move that actually is keeping this pawn a little safe. But... Is it actually keeping it safe? What would you do with black? Knight c7 is very interesting. So... I was thinking about d5, I'm not sure if this is the move I would go for in the game, but just to brainstorm, because you can't take this guy's pins, but if you can't take over here in c5, and then what should I do, bishop takes c4 maybe, take, take with the knight, whoops, and your bishop is kind of um, weirdly placed, uh, but I can't, I just can't take it back just yet, so that's why I was thinking, Maybe since, so I, ideally I want to play d5, but I can't because if d5, then c5 falls, correct? So that's why I was thinking maybe rook c8, and now I have two threats. I will either want to take over here and then here, or I want to play d5 and attack here. Oh, um, well, be easy, um... Well, if you can't, you can just try and say, bring the rook next to the queen, and I'll understand what you're trying to say. Yeah, fragrance, that's what I was thinking. Um, I thought about maybe queen c8 too, after queen a4. Um, I kind of like the queen here, to, so that it, I still keep the d5 option open, and I'm still looking at this bishop a little. So I, I don't think I would go with um, queen c8, but I, would, I think the move I would go for is rook c8, because d5 is giving my opponent too much chance to open stuff up, while here uh, it's not as much. And also after d5, one thing that I was thinking about, well, not that, is uh, if he were to take here, look, um, this might also be kind of interesting, but... I'm not really sure how much I would enjoy this, because my bishop is still pretty weird over here. And well, it is, it is a nice position, I can bring my knight, this bishop could be very nice, but my opponent is still um, has too much activity. So I think I would go with rook c8. Yeah, okay. So, um, for all of the reasons mentioned above, he played bishop f2. Now, what would you do? Would you take it immediately, or would you still try and develop a little and then take it? don't like the idea d5 just yet because this bishop is this, this bishop is protected if d5 you can take and um, I want I want to eat that pawn we love free pawns so oh you mean knight c7 well knight c7 is nice but what about the pawn this is free pawn nobody likes free pawns since when So, I didn't take the pawn, I should have, but I was a little scared um, of this position, white being able to pull something off, 
and I was like, mm, my knight isn't as strong, and I don't really know how to open the position up, so I didn't go for it immediately. Um, like, I mean, I can't play knight d2 here, but the check, and um, I don't really want that. You get you get too much freedom as white, but according to engines, this was actually um, better for black, just um, still complicated. It feels complicated too, so I was trying to lessen the complications with queen c7, and so queen c7, my idea is super simple. I am still going for this guy, and I might be able to actually try and take more stuff on the way as well, maybe considering say something like taking over here, maybe, just keeping my options open. So what do you think white should do? Oh, you want to start pushing g4 and stuff, huh? d5, yeah. d5 should be the one of the candidate moves that you guys are thinking about. Good job, be easy. e6 should be too. I would love it if white played queen b3. I would just take that and tank my opponents deeply. So, my opponent played d5, which was interesting. Now, I would love it if you guys gave me a line on at least candidate moves on what should black do and what are you thinking about. Do you see any real uh, tricks or threats? Stuff like that. Because this is one of the high points on the in the game. And like, if you make mistakes here, then all of the things you know about the pawn structure and all the setups that you've done it would be kind of all for nothing, so... Triple pawns, that would be cool, but... I, can't, I couldn't really force my opponents to uh, make bad moves. I wish I could. Um, it is black to move in this position. So that's why I'm asking, what do you want to do? Do you want to take something? Do you want to avoid stuff? Okay, I like the idea d e5 and rook d8. That's pretty neat. Um, I would, uh, it would be very, very nice to uh, see a line. Like, D takes E5, what should white do? Okay, so, um, while taking on d5, I wouldn't do it, because I, taking over here, then I don't really know what to do with this bishop. I mean, I could try to play c4 and um, push the bishop back a little, but even if c4, there's always this, whoop, always this take, attacking my queen and then moving the bishop back. And everything is kind of protected. This is square is super weak. Knight can come, bishop can come. Um, 
If bishop c2, I could consider taking, but this is also opening white's bishop a little too much, and my bishop and knight are um, looking kind of weird over here. So, I didn't want to op give uh, my opponent that chance by opening it up that way. So, I took here. I'm having a suggestion from Chestnut on knight takes c4. Knight takes c4 is interesting. Um, let's see, what could be problematic? Now we're taking over here could be problematic. But you might have d5. So this is interesting. If if, if with d5. Uh, let's see. Knight takes c4. Is there anything worrying? What about queen a4? Attacking this guy and this guy. This seems quite problematic. No? Knight c4? Queen a4? Yep. Thank you, Josh. So, D takes E5. For example, you take back, I take back, Bishop G3 to activate your pieces. I don't really want to play something like Queen F6 because, um, first of all, it's very passive, and second of all, why, why should I not give the check? And now, so, so far I took one pawn with black. Do you think it's safe to try and take this one? Or do you want to call your blessings and start pushing pawns maybe? Yeah, so what do you want to do? Okay, so Okay, so E5 is wrong. Thank you. Because you lose your pawn. So, don't touch the E pawn. E D5 seems to be interesting. I agree. E D5 seems to be quite interesting. Um One thing that I'm a little looking at is what if I just give up on this side and come take your pawns on the other side? Because your pieces are way into queen side, so I could try my chance in the king side. That's why I'm thinking maybe t taking on c4 is more interesting. And. Now, what do you do after bishop c4? So, officially on the board, you have two more pawns, but it's not easy to actually, um, like, it's not like, all right, I'm super winning, I can do whatever I want. So, you have to be very careful. So, and your queen looks a little misplaced. So, maybe for white, you could consider something that has uh, something to do with the queen and uh, stuff, because if you just take it, like that, that's perfect. I'm good. Give me two more moves and I'll start pushing these pawns like like baby monsters. So after bishop c4, what do you want to do as white? Keep thinking about takes and moves with threats and maybe um, trapping the queen and trying stuff like that.
de denuncios. Okay, bishop f4. Oh, be careful, bishop. If you play like bishop f4, this guy is a little whoopsie doopsie. Knight f4. Yeah, knight f4. Knight f4 seems to be the best one. Rook f3. Um, I mean it's doable, but queen just runs away. So yeah, knight f4. So after knight f4, you are protecting this guy and attacking this guy, and protecting this one. So, these are uh, kind of the high points on the game. So, what do you want to do with black? Are you going to try and take over here, take over here, try to free your queen somewhere else, push? A lot of ideas, huh? So it helps to think what, what what does white want. White wants to take over here. White wants to attack your queen from either here or here. So white wants uh, to either go after the queen or after this pawn. So one of the first things that you can start eliminating is e5 or ed5 or bishop d5. So these three moves you can immediately eliminate. White is not winning. Surprise, surprise. There is a nice way for you to get your bishop out. I gave it away. There is a nice move with the bishop to get your queen out. Well, the suggestion of bishop d3. I think my concern with bishop d3 would be rook d rook e1. Because then the queen can't really go anywhere. You could try like bishop e2 and then like take over here, maybe try to get out. But you have something stronger. Yep. Enthusiastic. Enthusiast. You are correct. Bishop b3. So the idea is quite simple. If it's white, if it's, uh, if you move, depending on where you move your queen. Let's say you move your queen. Um, well, your queen can lo only logically go over here because if you play like queen h5, um, even though my queen seems to be a little trapped, I still have this d2 square to go to. So I would just take over here and go to d2, or take with the bishop and go to d2. So my in the game, he played queen b1. I could have. Uh, I mean, I consider something like c4. And then if you attack me, I'll just go to c5, but this is a little um, unpleasant and unnecessary. So you can just take it over here, and your queen can just run away. So, let's say we take over here, and you take here. So, now, you are two pawns up as black, so you do have advantage. But how can you actually convert this advantage to a full point? It is black to move. Try and give me uh, just few ideas on how you want to get your pieces back in the game. Because your pieces are very uncoordinated. And okay, the first move is not that hard. Knight f6 is actually pretty easy to find because the threat of bishop h7 was coming. So knight f6, okay. We all can agree on that, but after that, what do you want to do with this guy, what do you want to do with your rooks? Just like a brief overview of what do you want.
Okay, so you want knight to be on c4 and probably rook on e8 or d8. Okay, so um, keep in mind that you're also going to you're attacking this guy as well. So let's say queen c2. You play um, this rook, uh, this could be coming up. So you can play rook e8. Knight c4 is also interesting. I'm a big fan of knight c4 as well. But rook e8 seems uh, more legit, at least to me. And now I get to have my queen over here. And in this position, he played bishop d6. Bishop f4 is also interesting. But I always have this queen h5 and I still am um, safe. So, my question to you, bishop d6. What do you want to do as black? Um, Jake, Jacob, Jake, Jacob, you're doing good. Why would you resign? Black is still pretty good. Almost winning. Think about intermediate moves. Alright, knight g4 is interesting. Could you please give me a line? Great, knight g4, bishop g4, queen d6. Yeah, so um, in the game I played knight e4, but knight g4 is also very interesting just because take, you just take it, and if bishop g4, you have queen d6. And if you don't take it and play something like queen e2, I just have, ooh, I don't want to give this up. Okay, let's think. What would you do after queen e2? And I couldn't actually, I didn't find this move in the game, and in the game I was like, okay, if I play knight g4, rooks get changed and then queen e2. What am I gonna do next? Because this guy is under attack, this guy is under attack. So, knight g4 is not a blunder, knight g4 is winning. Think about intermediate moves. First of all, this is not going to be possible because of queen h2. So, think about a way to um, work with that idea. Rook f2 is interesting, but what do you do after queen takes g4? Knight f2 is also interesting, but still king g1, you, you don't really know what to do with your rook. What are you gonna do? Rook f6? Rook f6, you can just take it and mate coming up. Two, two bishops are super strong. Mm, no, knight f2 is not the most accurate one. Remember, um, rook d8, interesting, but after rook d8, um, so you have the right idea to attack this bishop, but not the not the correct piece. Hi, Joseph. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Finally, it t takes only twenty five hundred plus to find the most, right? <laughs> yeah, knight c four. Knight c four is the good one. And so the idea is that if you take over here, well, great, I just take this. And if you take with the queen, knight d6. But my problem was that if knight d6, bishop d5, then what do I do? This is still super hard to actually be able to win. So the move that I missed was after queen g4, there's queen d2. And queen d2, I'm attacking your, whoops, 
I'm whoops. I'm attacking your rook and your bishop, and you can't stop him. And that was my mistake. So even the rook d1, yeah, just take it. It's not like you can take it. You get mate. Oh well, Danilo, if you said that, sorry. Yeah, queen d2, queen d2 was interesting, and that's the move I missed in the game. Queen d2 just did, didn't, I didn't think about it. I'd like to think that I could find it if I looked at it right now. But anyways, I didn't play knight g4, I played knight e4. And after knight e4, he took a rook takes f8, because if bishop takes f8, well, there are a lot of tempting ideas. There is rook takes e6. And next I have this, there is, um, if you take over here, just queen takes e6 and your bishop is a bit trapped, what else there is? Maybe knight, maybe not knight g3, I mean it's possible, but, I mean I think this is also good enough. You take, I just take and... I have this guy more. So bishop f8 doesn't work. And that's why rook takes f8, rook takes f8 here, here. And okay, now we have advantage. Clear, clear advantage because we have these two guys, whoops, these two guys, two pawns against, uh, against the rook and a bishop. And the bishop is trapped. So now the main question is how to come take the bishop. So, how do you guys think you should come eat the bishop up? Queen f7, king g8, okay, so, for, sorry, first of all, it's uh, white to move, because if it's black to move, knight g3, and the, the rook falls, so king g8, a1, I played king g8, so those of you who said king g8, you're right, and those of you who said knight g3, if that was white to move, that is also right, uh, if it was black to move, whoa, I keep getting my whites and blacks mixed up today, anyways, Queen f2 is pretty much the only move to try and keep the bishop, because if I take it, um, I, I, I let your rook get in, and your bishop to go free, and we do not want that. Uh, maybe not bishop e7, just bishop d6, or rook e8. Anyways, just, um, we don't want, you don't want to give your opponent the chance to get in the game. So. Knight f, uh, after queen f2, knight comes to c4. I'm completely ignoring the fact that your queen is over here. And now I go for the queen exchange. And now, alright, so this is a winning endgame. What do you want to do? How are you going to win? You're, you guys are good. Um, I should have been more clear on whose move it is. Knight f6, very interesting. Be careful, bishop e7. We don't want to get let the bishop run away. Yeah, take the pawns. Take this guy first. You also have the, the threat of this. Whoa. Whoa. And after rook goes away, you give the check. You get your knight out again, attacking the rook. And now you come take the bishop. And the rest is easy peasy. 
just make sure you're not losing your pieces and he resigned but these are all baby queens right knight takes c3 very good yeah i gave you guys a spoiler all right uh i'm gonna look at prepare the next one uh, so just let me know if you guys are having any questions and comments on this one so uh i have few of the games ready one of them in particular i think you will completely love because it's our our yasser uh so that's one of the games all right let's look at this one i did Thank you. Yeah, it was a good game. It was I, I have some good games. Right? Wow, six games. Alright, so this is a game between John Timon and Yasser Sirwan. You, know, you all know Yasser, right? If you don't know Yasser, go right now. Pause this video, go on uh, another YouTube video of Yasser doing commentary and watch those. Then come back and rewatch the rest of this. So, I had a question from Brian. What if before Queen Exchange goes to G3 with the black... Mm, okay, hold on. Before we start this, we have a question Whoops, from last one. I'll be super quick. Uh, before Exchange of Queens. So, somewhere around here... Um, what was the question? If before white exchange goes to g3 uh, with the black bishop, I don't, I don't get the question. Sorry, guys. Oh, earlier. When the queen was on d2. Oh, the, the analysis. This. Oh, you're, wow, you're fast, uh, Crash. Yeah. So if bishop goes to g3, yeah, you're good. Wow. Good job. I didn't, I didn't catch where you guys were talking about. Cool. All right. Proud of you, Akrash. All right. Let's get back to Yasser's game. Okay. So, in this game with Yasser, um, this was actually a pretty nice game. This is in 1983, so uh, f 15 years before I was born. And if you guys could see this uh, cute picture of Yasser up here, that is really awesome. He had this like 70s, 80s face. Yeah, see up there? It's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so this was another interesting Nimzo Indian. And here, uh, I, I like to play C5, but... Um, most, mm, I mean, it's kind of like similar ideas, but after F3, it could uh, become a little unpleasant, and that's why some p some players prefer to have it with B6. And in this one particular, it was quite interesting, because uh, F3 was played. So the idea is F3 does that instead of playing E3, then E4, they want to go E4 immediately. And so let's say you bring the knight out, you bring your bishop out, and this uh, unorthodox knight h3. So compared to the other line, when you would play e3, and then you would bring your bishop out and your knight out, and then like start pushing like this. So the difference is the knight that goes on h3, 
And actually, the knight on h3 sometimes is actually more useful because it's participating in the, the upcoming attack on the king. And see, black hasn't had the chance to castle yet, and if castle, bishop g5 is coming. You don't have the time to play knight e8 like in the game that I played. So... Yasser played the knight a5, and then castle, and he got this bishop g5 that I was trying to avoid in the in my game, right? So, bishop g5, e5 is coming, right? So you kind of have to play d6, e5, what do you do now? It's not a very hard move to play, but ideally instead of just the one mover, I want like I play like here, my opponent does that, then I'll do this. Like just like a two move calculation, so I, we, I could see that you are all following me. Yep, you kind of do have to play queen d7, and the idea is if you take it, I take it and it's kind of safe for right now. But if you play queen c2, I get to play knight e8, and that's what happened in Yasser's game. Let's say queen comes to e4, bishop b7, queen runs away a little bit, and now you do the f6. Because if you don't play f6, first of all, this guy's coming. And second of all, your position is really stuck. And after bishop b7, you don't even have that hold on c4. So you see how it can go bad so fast. f6, take, you take with the knight. And now white gets to play bishop d3. Now, what do you want to play with black? Because your position is getting a little, um, a little too uncomfortable. So h6, g6, these are doable, but your position doesn't need them right now, especially because, well, what is your, what is white's main threat? If it's white to move again, is white going to take over here? Well, you just take with the pawn and your queen is protecting your h7 pawn, right? So, well, funny, fun fact, d, a, g, instead of uh, a6, you can play bishop a6 and go for this guy. Because the thing is, in these positions, um, this idea of on attacking c4 is one of your, is like your main idea. So you should try and work around that whenever possible. And so let's say bishop takes, you take with the pawn, and your queen is actually protecting this so far safe and sound. Castle, what do you want to do now?
<laughs> Mackenzie, that's funny. Sacrifices for questionable compensation? How about non-existent compensation? <laughs> Well, you can just take the pawn. What's wrong with taking the pawn? That was your whole idea to come take the pawn, right? And after take take, there is this knight f4. And uh, Yasser played e5. Timon took, took with the knight, rook d1, queen f7, and they agreed on a draw. I mean, the game still has uh, some a lot of potential to be continued. But um, I don't think that just having that one pawn, one extra pawn, wherever that pawn you want to think it is, is going to actually be that difference. Mm, like, it's not, it's not a decisive advantage. So I understand making a draw and I, I, will, I support it. Because uh, the position, white definitely has compensation. So um, it's just a personal matter if you want to... Um, continue and take your chances or if you feel like this position doesn't really have much to offer. I'm going to wait a minute on questions because I don't want to keep going back and forth. But as soon as uh, you have your questions, lines, suggestions ready, let me know. Next, we're going to look at a game of Carlsen versus Leco, 2007. It was a rapid game, so we can understand some of them, but i just like to share the idea and how they played it. No questions? Oh, I'm glad you guys are learning. Alright, everyone ready for Carlson? Well, okay, so why not King H8 Rook G8? It is possible. I'm not saying that the position is a dead draw. I'm saying that um, the position is dangerous and White has definite compensation. So... If you feel uncomfortable playing in a position that your your king is open, your opponent has more active pieces, compensation, and you're just uh, all you have is one more pawn and a better supposedly better pawn structure with no clear uh, advantage, it is it is a it's there's nothing wrong with you accepting a draw or offering a draw. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's get to Carlson. Ready? You better be ready. It's Carlson. Right? Alright. So this game, let's look at it from White's perspective. Because Carlson is White and we all want to be Carlson. Okay. Um, so, uh, Sai Akarash. Yeah, that would be cool. Feel free to send it away. I am working on the queen versus rook endgames. Okay. The, to answer the question for be easy, I don't see why the bishop captures bishop in both games. Okay, so the thing is, um, if you were to take knight, ta if you were to take knight take c4, the problem is that your bishop on a6 is always going to be pinned with that bishop on d3. So that's the main reason you kind of just take it with the with the um, with the bishop, so you don't have that pin. All right. So let's get to Carlson game. Okay, so this is a Carlson game between um, that happened in two thousand seven. It was a rapid blindfold game, and he played it against Peter Leko. All right, so this is, a, uh, they started with a3 and continued with f3 like in the game between Timon and Yasser. 
Immediate e4, immediate bishop g5, not even playing knight h3. And here, Leko played the idea with long castle. Someone suggested that last in the last game. And so, Black is simply trying to play long castle. And I'm not, I'm not saying that you should play long castle. I'm just saying that's an idea to, that you can consider. And if that's your style, sure, go work on it. And um, that's doable. So I'm just showing you what is doable and what are some of the ideas in it. So let's say after long castle, let's think, what should white do? First of all, what do you want to do with your king? I think that's the main question. What do you want to do with your king? Uh, Sayakash, how do I send it? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if... I'm not sh um, Let me think about that a little. I'll let you know. Uh, I'd like to have a tall style. Well, me too. We would all like to have a super tall style, don't we? Uh, sacrifice everything and whoa. Um, so you think short castle. Well, you could just try to keep the king in the center. There's no attack, direct attack on it right now. So, okay. We have some answers on what to do with the king. Now, my other question for you is... What move do you want to play right now as white? So you want to close the center and put the king in the center. Interesting. Close the... Yeah. So I have uh, ideas with c5 and queen a4. I feel like c5 is coming up, but not just yet. Maybe another move or two. Yes, Magnus is white. Yeah, great. Great Gunter, d5. So my idea, well, not my idea, but Magnus's idea is, well, if you take it, whoops, if you take it, take, attack the, whoops, attack the knight, and attack the bishop, so you take it over here, I can just take it with the king, and what do you want to do with your knight? And uh, the king, white king, is already getting a little bit safer when when black's king is already getting slightly weaker so that is that is the idea and after d5 knight a5 what do you want to do now surprisingly magnus didn't win this game Think about, so this move was actually suggested, um, last move. And Queen A4, possible, but something more aggressive. Also, keep in mind this was a rapid game. And blindfold. Yeah, C5. The idea is quite simple. You take it over here. Now, are you going to take back, or are you going to come up with an intermediate move?
Yeah. Good job. D6. So, yes, you can take back, and taking back is nice too, but D6 is a whole, a whole different level. D6, take, take, queen has to go to F8, king takes F1. This king looks so exposed. And E5 might be coming up, like if you play knight B7, I will definitely play something like E5. Knight E8, E5. Now, how can black try to dig himself out of this hole? White's next few move could be just to try and bring the knight in. If black plays like super chill and doesn't really do anything. So, black needs to up his game. Black needs to go a little chop chop fast. Yep, f6. White's never gonna take this. Just because queen can take, knight can take d6, and black's position has the potential to become explosive very fast. And so, after f6... You know you're not going to take it. So with white, what do you want to do? Yes. Yep, queen d3. If king b7, now you play rook b1, you might want to come have ideas like that. Let's say f takes e5. What do you do now? h3 5 is also interesting. But right now the game is more in the center and queen side, so that's why everything is happening over here and it's better to try and just uh, play over there. So right now what do you want to do with white? How do you want to get your pieces out? How do you want to try and, um, you know, maybe sacrifice something? Yeah, um, okay, queen e4 check is good, knight c6, now, in the game, Magnus took on b6, um, I can't say I would do the same, I wish I, I wish I knew I would do it, and he just went about it like that, and here, what should white do? You see, white only has these two material that he is um, 
trying to attack with and the, like it seems like white definitely needs more pieces so how can you try to achieve that can you actually try to get your other pieces there Well, think about moves with threats. So one of these moves with threats could be Rook B6. And the idea is quite simple. I'm going for this knight. You move the knight, it's mate. So, what should black do? Yeah, good job on finding your P6, everyone. Yep, rook b8. Take. Now g4. Now black is the one attacking. Because black has more pieces to go for this king. And black's king looks super weird and weak. But it's still holding on. Queen d3. So that's rook b1 can't happen. So rook b2 happens. Going after this square. Now e2. Blocking it. Now g3. See how strong this is? Again, mate coming up. So, what should Magnus do? I mean, all of these moves are possible. Oh, okay, if it's black to move, it's mate. So it's white to move. All of these checks and uh, checks are possible, but uh, if you move your queen, so let's say if you give this check, this and the next move, queen f2, bye-bye. Uh, See you next game. So um, you have to be very precise. Okay, so think about it like this. This is becoming mates, right? So just run away with the king. Yep. Good job, Akshay. Finding king e1. What if rook b8 now? Now this guy's coming. Good job everyone finding King E1. It was a strong move. Now, find another strong move, please.
Well, Carlson resigning? Whoa, you kidding me? That's never gonna happen. So, uh, in the game, he played KD1. And the idea is pretty simple. You give me check, I'm gonna block you. Leko to queen a3. This one check over here. And now what do you want to do as white? King e1, king d1 was pretty strong. Even even though this was a rapid game and this position looks super sketchy and everything. <laughs> no, no, no. Enough, enough king moves. Let's think about some pawn grabbings maybe. Uh, in the game, he did take knight here, knight b5, queen c6, and then they just repeated. Because after knight b5, in this position, after knight b5, what can you do? This knight c3 is coming, and that's actually pretty nasty, and queen is getting forked with the uh, king and everything, so... And after knight a7, what can you do? Take over here? I mean, you don't really want that, right? So, all you can do is your queen should be in this diagonal, so that rook b1 is avoided, and knight b5 is um, not letting you stay in the diagonal. So, that's how the game ended in a draw. Now, I want to show you another game. Um, while you guys are thinking and maybe give me a few questions on uh, what you think on this one. Just give me a second to prep it because I'm actually going to mix a bunch of games together so I can show you better. And hopefully it's not going to be confusing. If it's confusing we can always go back to the, the way I was showing it. I just need to... Um, waiting anyone questions on the last one because we can always go back no nothing cool I'm um, still finishing up this part whoops if my mouse doesn't keep jumping a little up and down control one did it All right, I am ready to show you this game from Botswinik and another game from uh, this F3 line. Okay, so uh, let's see if I have any questions for the last one. Why can't black take the pawn on C3 with the knight? Alright, let's see why not. Okay, so I'm ready to go for the next game, but because I have a question, we're gonna take a look at on the Magnus game. Why can't knight c6 happen, knight c3 happen? Well, knight c3 can happen, but... Um, I'm assuming something like king c2 or king d2, and what do you want to do next? Check, I just go up. And eventually you're gonna run out of checks and this rook is gonna become very active if you try to create more checks. So I'm assuming that the king on d3 is actually kind of safe. So... Yeah. Alright, everyone good for next one? Cool. Okay. So... Now I'm going to try to summarize the stuff that we've seen while showing a bot winning game. And um, so this game, this is like, I kind of combined a bunch of games together so I could show it better. And um, 
when we get to the game, I can share the game, the the name of that specific game players that we're looking at, and hopefully there won't be any confusion. If there are, just let me know and we'll cl clear it up. Okay, so this is a typical Nimzo Indian setup. Here we uh, White has a bunch of moves. There's the a3, there's bishop g5s, there's g3, there's knight f3, there's e3, there's queen c2, and those are just, oh, f3, those are just few, um, those are just like the main ones, there are a bunch of others too. So, for queen c2, I, uh, I explained um, this idea with knight c6 in one of my earlier videos, and we have a link in the description below, so make sure that if you want, check that out. So far, we've been focusing on a3 with e3 and f3, and those are actually pretty nice to have uh, around because if a3 take take um, knight c6 or c5 earlier, your choice. And f, let's say knight c6, there's f3, there is e3, and so those are the things that we are going to watch. So. The game that Yasser played was with f3, and in Yasser's game, the I believe it was the knight h3, or, um, yeah, it was the knight h3 one, that Yasser did this knight a5, and, queen, uh, and then he did castle. There are lines with queen c8, and it's doable, but I don't really have any strong feelings like for or against it. The queen c8 would be to try and um, delay the castling on either side and to get away from the bishop g7s, bishop g5 ideas. So that's something to look at if you want to. Now, instead of knight h3, uh, what if e5 earlier? So e5, knight g8, knight h3 you gotta move the knight, queen a4, so this was um, a game done uh, by, oh god, help me with pronunciation, Diaz Holemart versus Real de Azua, hopefully we can get that in typing, maybe, and um, it was in 2008, both of them are um, 2400 players, and so they played queen e7, and after c5 and a bunch of exchange, um, this actually turned out pretty well for black. But what I looked at, um, and I liked, instead of queen e7, was knight e7. And so my idea is, if well, it's not my idea. It's like my perf my preferred idea is if you play something like knight g5. I'm just gonna play queen c8, put my queen on b7, and just hold this position like that. And this is actually this uh, position that I'm showing you. This line is a game between Jababa versus Khairulin. In 2011, you all know Jababa, the crazy tactic guy, just sacrificing everything. Has super cool lines though. He's from Georgia. Hydrulin is a Russian grandmaster. And yeah, so this is just, I'm just showing you quickly on what they did. And it's actually nice to um, give it a try if you want. Queen C8 is kind of weird, but that's one of those ideas that if you're thinking about it in the game, you're most likely not going to do it. But if you know it beforehand, you can try to be like, oh, I've seen this before, so I could try to apply that. So that was the idea with Knight G5. I'm going to show you quickly on Bishop D3. Um, again, you can do the Queen C8 idea, and pretty doable. Right? So one thing that you don't want is you don't want to do short castle in these positions. That's like a death sentence already. Knight g5 coming, f4, f5 coming, bishop g5. It's like everything. Do not do that. And right now I realize that I sounded like Caleb Denby a little. When I was doing like, this is coming, that is coming. But anyways. Okay. So that's the line that I wanted to share with you. The queen c8, queen b7, queen c6 idea. Now, let's get to Batwinik game, because that's also a super cool game. So, 
Your opponent can start with a3 and then transpose it to e3, f3, or can start with e3 and then get to f3 and a lot of different transpositions, but it's just good to have these ideas. All right. Um, let's, let's say you start with e3, I do my c5, and you, we, did, we get this double pawn. Knight comes out, I did get my castle. One thing to keep in mind is try to delay d6 as much as possible. I didn't in a game that I played against the Grandmaster in 2017 and the game ended kind of painfully. And um, yeah, just try not to do d6 too fast because you also might want to bring this uh, knight. You, whoops, you might want to bring this knight over here. So don't do d6 too fast. But you do, do your castle and gets this um, that side ready to go now all right uh, now uh, I remember uh, so if if we remember correctly in the previous in the game that uh, I played there was some stuff that um, there were like the f4 lines and my opponent uh, played um, castle and then f4 that's I played f5 so I knew that f4 f5 idea because of the game that I'm about to show you that Botswinik played as black so what if bishop e3 bishop e3 d6 this is what Botswinik played um, d6 is right now necessary because if not if you play over here you would lose the, this pawn and you kind of want to keep your pawns ideally so, d6, castle, you bring out the knight, bring out your bishop. Now, so this is a good position for white. White manages, managed to have a decent setup for the king side and center, and the queen didn't go into weird positions, and the queen is defending the bishop, so the, I don't really have those d5 ideas anymore. So, as black, what do you want to do? Yeah, it's true. A lot of these close, semi-close positions are idea rather than line memorizations. But you do have to know that if your opponent is playing e4, the idea is bishop g5. So you see e4, your position has to be ready to run away with the knight. So you got to play this knight e8, ideally. All right, yeah, I got a recommendation for queen d7. You are playing very well. So... Here, uh, Botwinik is white. Botwinik played f4. And after f4, now we get to f5. This is why I knew this, uh, because of this Botwinik game. Botwinik is white, but I call it Botwinik game. <laughs> so, um, this is a very, um, this is very interesting because you can try to play, um, you could try to play f6 but the problem is if you were to play f6 um, it's possible there are so many Yusupov and Karpov games in it and again it's doable but you have to be careful like you're kind of ready if you get f5 you're gonna go e5 if you get e5 you're gonna go f5 and um, I prefer to have my pawn on f5 because of the personal experiences, but it is perfectly fine to play f6 as well. So, it's a personal choice. Do you like f5? Go for it. Do you like f6? Go for it. But, f4, f5. So, well, white's not going to take this, right? Because then the tension is gone and the, all the focus is going to be... And all the game and the focus is going to be on this guy. There could be rook c8 coming, taking. This guy is like just sitting duck. So, 
Why is played rook e1? And now my question for you as black is what do you want to do now? Okay, so I'm getting ideas with queen a4 and to try to bring out the knight. Well, knight f6 is a blunder, so knight f6 um, not really my top choice because knight f6 you can just whoops bye bye pawn. But you do have the right idea to bring out the knight, so that's why g6. You want to bring out the knight, and your knight's gonna stay here happy, hold all of these pawns, and just. Life's great, right? Everything is protected and you can go after this pawn and voila. So, after g6, what white can do? Well, white can't really do much because the attack is kind of stopped. So white uh, can try to positionally um, make some changes like rook d1, maybe coming for e5, maybe d5, just to have ideas. After rook d1, those of you who have been watching my other videos and streams know that I hate it when the rook is against my queen and I always run away. So, having said that, what do you want to do now? Uh, BEZ is asking if bishop a6 knight f5 required for today's lesson. Well, kinda, yeah, that's the whole team. That's the whole team. Theme, theme. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> working on my pronunciations every day. So yeah, um, th that's the whole theme of today because I was going, I have been showing you these uh, pawn structures and I have been showing you how to play against it. And um, the whole idea is to have that if the if these two pawn um, pawns are here, the double pawn. This is one way that you can play it with the bishop and the knight. And then we saw the ideas with delaying d6, having that knight e8, f4, immediately f5 or f6, and that queen c8, queen d7 ideas. So yeah, we have been doing these. What is most important when you're trying to improve? Improve the position or your level? Because for both of them, calculations. You need good calculation. Because if you can't calculate, even if you uh, have a super deep understanding, you're gonna get caught in calculations. Is nice says six never played to keep the C file free for the rook? Um, I mean, you already played this knight C6 and then A5, so yeah, you want to play rook C8 eventually. Alright, so, black played something like queen F7. And the idea is simple. I am running away. And now I might start looking at, I'm also kind of looking at your pawn over here. And my queen is uh, keeping my king safe. So queen f7 is a positional, um, is positionally great. All right, so after queen f7, e5, what do you want to do as black? Well, knight c7, okay, so the problem um, to answer Jacob is knight, the knight c7, the problem is that where are you going to go next? Everywhere is blocked for you. So, but if the knight is on g7, knight c7, even though doesn't really have a better place to go, is keeping the king safe and warm. All right, 
right, so I'm having D5. I, I'm getting D5 suggestions. But hold on, if even if it's white to move, white's not going to take this, right? Because then your knight gets to come in. So that's why rook c8 is the better move. Rook c8, if you take it, oh, thank you. I brought, whoa. Frozen chess base. Flying knights. Cool. Still frozen chess base. A little bit, yeah. Alright, well, everybody, we are having a lovely f frozen chess base. How is your day going? It's not that hard to get it back though, and I know which game it was, so I'll just go back to that game. As soon as I find it, there we go. And control 1 for Ben Simon, control F for me. And we were somewhere around here. Yeah. That's fast. Huh? That's fast. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Less than 30 seconds of fixing. All right, cool. So, rook c8. And I was telling you that taking, taking doesn't really work, and that's where the knight throws. So I'm a little scared to touch this knight right now. But the, the, the problem is that, well, that guy is super weak, and my knight just got got a um, my knight just got a job pretty much whereas knight on e8 didn't really have anything to do so that's why white won't take this instead white played rook e1 again white is just but but Winnick is just sitting there waiting for um, the opponent to you know make some moves make a mistake maybe maybe not okay so, after rookie one, taking over here, taking with the D, well the thing is if you take with F, the problem is that this guy now has three attacker and only two defender. So we can just take it and take the pawn. See? Delicious, right? So, that's why uh, white has to take back with the D, so there is no more activating the CA trick. Now, now black managed to finally get this knight to G7, because let's be realistic, this knight's never going to actually see the light of day. Even if you come to C7, where are you going next? There's like, all of your squares are kind of blocked, so might as well stay here, protect e e E6. Protect the king and everything's good, right? Life's happy. Knight f1. Now you get rook d8. So, um, one thing to be cautious this knight is not completely useless because the knight can go over here and have some ideas over here. These two guys are still living, even though it's not like in the center or in an outpost or anything, everything is still. Um, going and in a rhythm. So, bishop f2, knight h5, I'm attacking your pawn. Bishop g3, and this bishop is also pretty useless, right? I mean, if this bishop was here, alright, yeah, that's a monster bishop. But that's never gonna happen. So, now, how do we bring more attack on c4 pawn? Doubling on d5 is good, that's something that's coming up soon, but you have a better, um, better move, better idea. Yeah, Queen E8, Queen A4. Congrats, Nick and Anna, and whoever else were thinking about it. Yep, Queen E8, Queen A4. Now, these guys are all pushing on here. 
and why it's simply breaking a little also this might be coming up and all of these pawns are becoming gonzos so queen a2 seems to be the only move to actually protect a3 now remember how you guys hated this knight when it was on e8 right now the knight went to g7 h5 and takes the bishop now i'm gonna ask another question what do you want to do with black so black has a better position see all of these pieces are actually doing something useful and you just have to be able to create more threats and more attacks so this is uh, why you guys are thinking about a move i'm gonna suggest um, i'm gonna keep talking and giving some advice so um I've heard this expression so many times and in this specific position that's something that's very useful. So growing up and I was learning more about strategy, I, I, everybody kept telling me that okay you can't win a game with just one weakness. You need more weaknesses like you need to have, um, you can't just keep attacking on c4 because your opponent will keep defending on c4, uh, apply it to this position. And that's why um, black needs to create another weakness. So now my question is, how do you do that? B5, um, no, rook takes D3, oh, please don't. You, um, your position is good. You don't need to do sacrifices. Even if it might work, you would be giving your opponent too much chance. So this move might be a little weird, so I'm just going to say it and then for the future moves we can, uh, it should give you better ideas. H5. It's a very beautiful game. So the idea is to try and get this rook maybe to h8, maybe, and try to push on uh, h4, depending on what white does. So if white's just sitting like this for 5 move, I'm going to play like king f7, bring this guy and voila so after h5 white plays queen e2 uh, bishop e2 king up king up and now in this position h4 won't work as well anymore because there's always rookish ones and that's why we went we go for queen exchange now the the main thing is that this end game is better for black because white's completely stuck white cannot improve this position and you some of you might ask well how is black going to improve it i'm going to show you bishop d3 bring the king closer go back keep the pressure now try and double your rooks up now, the problem is if um, these guys also get doubled, the, um, the threat... Ooh, actually, hold on. I want you guys to find this because it's kind of pretty. Well, there are some, there are different threats and ideas, so it doesn't necessarily have to be this one. But one of it that I was just thinking about was trying to play knight b3. Let's say um, the main problem is that black, white is in Zuzhuang. If you move the king now, this is uh, this is pinned. See, now I can take. If you don't move the king, you just go back a little. Uh, this is a still, the bishop is kind of weak, right? Knight b3, what do you do? This guy falls. So the biggest problem is the concept that white is in Zugzwang. You move the knight, this happens. Whoops, you move the pawn, I can just move my king a little bit and... It was nice knowing you. Yeah, so you see, that's the biggest problem, white is in Zugzwang. And that's why, that is why white, instead of playing rook d1, whoa, instead of playing rook d1, white tried to play g4, 
to create something so I can take maybe Rukus, maybe something can happen, who knows. And if you take with this one, bishop g6, maybe trying to get something out of it. Even though g4 is not a, like a serious threat, it's good because it's creating chances for white. So after g4, I wouldn't take it just because I'm giving my opponent too many chances. But you also have to find the accurate move, which is rook d7. Now, the only move you actually do have to consider is these takes, or take, which is the same exact position. And after take, take, rook has to come to d1, right? Because if, if um, not rook d1, then, well, what do you do? You move the bishop, rook is bye-bye. Uh, you don't move the bishop, well, um, the bishop is pinned. Now this is coming, right? So, very, very interesting position. So, um, Reshevsky managed to force this Zugzwang on Batwinik. Now h4, completely paralyzing over here. Now, remember how we talked about this king e1 earlier, that was impossible because of knight b3. Well, not impossible, but bad, but well, here, king e3, same idea. After king uh, e1, knight b3, um, he, the, these are the last few moves, but this is already super winning. Well, not super winning, but winning enough for a grandmaster. Um, but Winnick tried to pull some stuff off with maybe a check over here. And uh, the most precise move is to take on d2. Reshevsky did that. And to try and exchange more pieces off. And that is what Reshevsky did. So um, here, you just have to be precise enough not to let your opponent just make queen, which is like five moves away. So pretty much all you have to do is put your king on e6, try to go to f5, and keep everything under wrap. Or if rook f3, rook d3, and um, this is a winning position as well. So yeah, that was a beautiful game, beautiful end game. And I, um, I really wanted to share this whole concept of the Nimzo Indian with those two um, double pawn with you, because I was thinking about um, more, more um, practical and more just idea based openings rather than just theories so um funny enough today earlier on our twitch channel we did um maroxi on ladies night class with uh, talia so if you want to go learn about maroxi you can do that too i'm considering um, doing more stuff like this just combining and talking about ideas on more of my chess and psychology classes and any of the the classes that i teach so if you guys like this, let me know, and I'll keep working on uh, creating um, like series like that, and picking some games of mine and some others, and doing it like this. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, keep pressuring your opponents in your daily online games, and keep let's keep pressuring throughout this whole quarantine, and well, it will be nice at the end, hopefully. Alright, have a good night and see you tomorrow.